Hey, 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 welcome to the Dear Creator YouTube channel. If this is your first time here, hey, I am Danny Daniela, your self-investing storyteller. And today I have a piece of content that I want to share with you all. And we're going to review together. One simple question. Today's content creator is Zachary Helton. Zachary Helton was found on Instagram. And from his page, it looks like he focuses on spirituality for those who struggle to find a place. He's also a writer. I'm going to pull up his page here now. It says Jesus 2024 braided away. It looks like he has some commentary here where he's sharing his base. So if anyone is interested in his content as today's view, I would say check out Zachary Helton. But for today's experience, we are just looking at any content online. And we may be applying it to the faith journey and that self-awareness journey, but mostly we're trying to exercise our critical thinking skills. We are looking for different perspectives and different angles. We are engaging in this content to be mindful of the content that we create in our everyday life, the content of our character, the content that we consume, the content that we, we seek, the content that we are hiding from ourselves. So... Today, I want to just watch this really short clip together, present a question, and luckily, guys, that's going to be the end. So we're going to see how this approach is, because I know that I can talk, okay? So we're going to try to see how it is to just take one piece of content, one at a time, and have a discussion. So let's take a look. So much of evangelical theology taught me that I couldn't trust myself. It told me that I was sinful, that I had a fallen nature. And so whatever I thought or felt, I had to learn to deny it. And then to do what God said instead. God's ways are higher than your ways. And that message ran deep. When I started to leave that world, I started to hear people saying things like, you can trust yourself. Your body is wise. And that was super confusing because I was pretty sure that trusting myself would lead to some pretty bad decisions, like giving in to temptation or lashing out at someone. But here's what I learned. My body's signals are trustworthy. And it's not about acting on every impulse. It's about seeing that those signals from my body point to deeper, entirely valid needs. If I feel mad, it's not a sinful thing that I need to repress. It's a sign that a boundary has been crossed and I need to speak up. If I feel like I need to eat a whole pot of mac and cheese, it doesn't mean I'm a glutton. It means that I'm feeling overwhelmed and need to process some feelings. So pastors might say, lean not on your own understanding, which can translate to don't ask questions if you think I'm teaching something harmful. Just do as I say. They might I'd say deny yourself and follow God, which translates to ignore your emotional and physical signals. Just push through and do what we ask and then you'll be rewarded later. But the truth is your body is wise. It does have your best interest in mind. And tending to your own well-being is the only healthy way you can love your neighbor. And anyone who tells you to override these signals in the name of God is more likely trying to control you or to get something out of you. But your flesh is not your enemy. It's your friend. You are good and you can trust yourself. So there's a lot happening here. I want to look at the comments, but before we look at the comments, after watching this clip, I want you to think of a recent decision, or maybe it doesn't have to be recent if you don't have any, where you felt torn between trusting your own feelings and following someone else's advice or falling into their expectations. I just want you to think about a recent decision where it was a conflict. I hear conflict in this piece, and I think that there are some valid points that are brought out in this piece, but I'm interested in what you all have to say with just that one question. If there's ever been a recent decision or a decision at all where you're conflicted between, this is how I believe, but this is what is expected of me, and this is what's been taught. The entire faith journey for me has been one that is is very exciting it's so much going on it's so much happening and it's it is a lot to keep up with because people have different perspectives and ideologies and doctrines and all the things that we're supposed to abide by but then there are questions that you might have about them that often leaves you in this world of conflict i'm just going to leave that there if you want to write about it in your journal, do so. If you have any thoughts about the video altogether, I would love for you to share your comments below. Now I'm going to spend the last few minutes of this video just looking at some comments, seeing if anything sparks any conversation for me. So I'm blindly looking at these comments. Usually I'm able to like look through some comments, but we're blindly looking at some of these comments. I'm going to look at this first one, which is pretty lengthy. So this one says, so your body wants to sleep with people so trust it? Question mark. Denying the flesh is the issue we saw in the garden that Jesus himself denied in Matthew 4 that we are told about in 1 John. 
I understand there is a well set up office and nice music and this is well presented but there's a generation of under 50 years old who are just mad at church and have thrived in rejecting scripture sin hell where their faith has just become their own idea of the bible in jesus you guys think the generation prior left a bad mark on you guys but the current generation doesn't even affirm scripture and where is rob bell anyway now where are these spiritual practices and self-focused sermons leading us towards more left, less of God's and God's word, less of life on a mission? People are dead in sin and need grace and mercy. The gospel, while a subculture has come out of the 90s and 2000s Christianity that has a hard time believing any of the Bible verses are true, everyone did what seemed right in their own eyes, trusting your body, flesh over the spirit, if not the way. Okay, so we have a response here. I'm going to read the response here, guys. Let's get into it. It's so much fun. And this is from Zachary Helton, the creator of this content that we just reviewed together, which you guys review self-awareness reviewing. And I did not yet. Okay. Zachary Helton says, hey, man, I think we've miscommunicated. If your body is telling you to sleep with people, trust message. Not that you should sleep with people, but that it's trying to meet a need. That need may be that you need connection or emotional expression or any number of things. And then you have agency to choose how to meet it skillfully and in line with your values. Interesting. I think the response is interesting because then we get the full picture of how someone responded to a content, right? So here we see in live and in action. Well, maybe not live. This happened like two weeks ago, it says. But that someone can receive your content, consume your content, and then have their belief systems, their environments impact how they respond right so they you could be saying something and they could hear everything but what you're saying and so this creator comes back and he responds and gives some clarity without having to bash i love it when people are able to like have conversations without bashing or or like putting people down because that's i hear a little bit of that in the first comment where we're like you you guys are doing this and this and evil. i think people are just trying to figure out life and when we have what we have before us were people who were trying to figure out life. All right, so let's just go ahead on to another comment we'll look at for today. This one said, show. I turned to God as an adult and I studied the Bible on my own and with Bible study fellowship. I'm sorry that as a child of God, that you had this experience of not truly understanding God's word and how it helps you love yourself, trust yourself, and know that God has great things for you. Keeping your body a holy temple is trusting your body. I would encourage you to learn the context of denying yourself and following God was given to the Israelites. What do you guys think? I know this could be a, a viewer who's not into the Bible or faith, but just based off of the conversation that we saw from the creator in the comment section, what can we draw from this? Are we responding to anything? I'm just curious. All right. This next one says, you explain a very heavy topic with so much compassion and clarity Thank you for this. Religious trauma is so real. It leads to disconnection from self and the body causing a sense of loss of identity. So many people who've had to survive it are now survivors of complex trauma living with autoimmune disorders and not to mention the cognitive dissonance. This is so wrong and in no way does it point to the ways of God. Okay, now I have something that makes me feel, okay. This comment is interesting because I... On this self-awareness journey that includes faith, I came across an article one time in life where it talked about religion and its relationship to mental health. And yikes, friends. I don't remember much of the audience, but just the title or the goal of the, the article alone. Maybe I'll bring that up on one of the channel if you're interested, you know, like this comment or like this video. <laughs> I'm trying to like engage, okay? I'm engaging. This is one of the things I wanted to explore is we all can see now that mental health is a big issue, that we're all having conversations about mental health and some sit in different places. They say, well, why are you talking about mental health all of a sudden? And none of y'all have mental health issues. This is just an X, Y, Z, whatever they put there. And others will say, well, now we're talking about it more because we have language around it and we haven't been doing it. And now we have the space to do so. When it comes to religion and mental health and cults, friends, I think that there is something for us to explore because there is something happening. We can't ignore the fact that some faiths are very extreme 
And maybe we are being led by people who don't know what they're doing, but they're trying their very hardest and they believe that it's good. And with such belief in good, they actually end up making it more harmful for people. I have this documentary that I wanted to explore with you all like a few months ago that I never got to, but hopefully I do. But it's this documentary or this this call where this woman was focused on health, on eating right. And she had a lot of scriptures to support it. And as I was watching the, the documentary, I thought to myself, man, I could easily see how I myself could have been inspired by this because one i always found it interesting that people in you know christianity for instance were big okay i was wondering about that and i don't say that because i think that it's happening all over the place maybe that's just in my world of what i was looking at but it just seems like we were big and after church we were eating you know, unhealthy foods, and we weren't taking care of the temple. But there's other places where we are really strong about taking care of the temple where it comes to fornication and, you know, maybe tattoos, they might say, all these other things that harm our body. So the way that we interpret it was food is okay because one, there's a belief system that we could just pray over that food and it would be okay. And two, it's not harming us like drugs and alcohol. But now, and the understanding is that some of this food is. And so we have to make these choices about keeping our temple the way that glorifies or appreciates it. And anyway, as I was looking at that call and the, and the understanding I have of myself, so I'm being transparent that I'm just navigating through life, trying to figure everything out. But as I was looking at things like this, I'm like, it's so easy for someone to have a dominant opinion and view about something. And for people who are struggling with something or, you know, are curious about something to kind of follow something where there's a lot of strength. There's a lot of strength in how you say it and how you speak it. I'm not sure if um, I'm making sense right now, but I'm going to go back to this comment. And it inspired me to think about how there is some trauma with faith. I'm not sure if it's God in the way that we see God in the Bible itself, it might be the lack of relationship or understanding or the desire or options to choose a personal relationship with God or encounter with God to say, look, I've been in this world, people are confusing me and I have this trauma and religion doesn't make sense and some of the things in the Bible are absurd and I don't understand it. Is there something that's wrong here? Am I being manipulated? These are the type of questions I think are important for anyone who's on a self-awareness journey, I do think faith is a is a good portion of that. Faith, in my opinion, leads a lot of decision. Faith or lack of faith in something does warp our reality. I don't know if warp is the word, but we're going to pretend that you guys are understanding what I'm saying right now. But let me just share, look at one more comment, and then I want you all in the comments to engage. Let me know what you think about the conversation in general from the creator, Zachary Helton. Do you have any questions? Are you on a faith journey? If you're not on a faith journey, what do you think about the comments and the, the pre presentation of the content? Is there anything that inspires you to create content um, as someone who believes or doesn't believe in a particular faith? I am interested in it all. From these conversations, I want us to look for journaling assignments. I want us to investigate our own triggers and inspiration. I want us to write more content, create more content and to review our lives in general as we are consuming it. So hopefully you'll get that takeaway. Let's look at one more comment and then I'll say goodbye, my friends. This one says, yikes. I love the word yikes. This goes against everything the Bible tells us. The Bible tells us not to trust our heart to lean on God for everything. You've trusted a man to teach you about the Bible and it seems your perception of who God is is way off. He is loving and kind. He is gentle and not quick to anger. Yo, I don't know. I don't know. Um, This is interesting. Interesting conversation. It's also interesting that this, that this is yikes because as I sit, I always say sit. I don't know. I'm always sitting in the world. When I think about people who are, who are able to say very definitive comments like this one, I consider myself and how I say things like this too. Like I say, like, you just not, you have this or you just do it. What does that even mean? But recently I've learned that I'm not sure if it's that I know or that these people know there's a, like a faith or there's a connection that you have with God that gives you that insurance. 
But there's also this space where people are being honest and transparent that they do not see it that way. And maybe the reason they don't see it that way is because things have been screwed up in the faith. Maybe they see it that way because they didn't have any insight or they they didn't have the environment. So who is the blame? I was riding in a car one time. I was in a rental car. All of a sudden, a rock came out of nowhere and ding the the window of the rental car. This car didn't belong to me. I was renting the car. And I just thought to myself, this is crazy. This is so crazy. I have, All I was doing was living. It was a sunny day, y'all. It was sunny. It felt good outside. But out of nowhere... A rock dings the window. And you know whose fault it is? It's mine. I I have to have insurance, right? There's insurance that's going to be needed to cover that. But it's not like the rental car is going to take the responsibility. It's not like this rock that came out of nowhere is going to take the responsibility. And I bring up this story because this is how life feels sometimes where there's things that happen to us, just come out of nowhere. And then we are expected to just have insurance we are expected to be able to take care of it and to and to to resolve it even though it came out of nowhere and we had nothing to do with it did we make did i make that rock come to my window and ding the window wasn't doing anything against the law was driving it was a sunny day i was i was in good thoughts i was happy but a rock came and dinged my window and my insurance is going to have to pay for it this is also the same type of story I would use as I'm as I live through life I like to look at things like this in my life and apply it but this is the same type of story I would use to say that I do need some type of insurance living here on earth and the closest thing to that would be my relationship with God because how else I don't see I don't grasp the same thing that people with a different perspective would grasp when it comes to digging into any other of the things, right? They all seem similar to me in some case, I will say that. But because I've had the encounter or the experience that gave me that assurance, right? Gave me that, oh yeah, this is real. I can gravitate to that where all the other things that I might've um, explored or gravitated to in, in some season through my spiritual journey just didn't hold enough weight. Now, does that mean that it doesn't hold weight for people outside of me? I don't know, right? I cannot tell. People are being honest in their journey and they're saying that it helped them. I also hear people who have used these other sources, have removed themselves from those sources and came back to their their true source, which they identified as a relationship with the God of the Bible. Or maybe it's not the God of a manipulated Bible. Maybe it's actually the relationship that people have with God of love, joy, and peace. The God of Abraham. Maybe we are identifying who this God is. And that's the God that is giving us that assurance or that peace for those who believe in a faith. For those who don't believe in it or have decided to use other things, it's very difficult for someone outside of outside of their belief system to say it's true or it's not false um, just because they have a belief system is my opinion because the world is just world and I don't know if that makes sense it doesn't. but I think it's, it's really important for us to, to, to do two things one is understand what we believe in understand what's the source of a belief and why they will believe it and what troubles or questions do we have about it so that we can approach them authentic, authentically and with a true heart to, to, to work through them because maybe the faith is still there, but you, it's just been distorted by other people. The other thing we need to do is when we identify that this is true or this is our faith, live it, believe it in your, in actual, in actual world, which means I don't have to discredit someone else's belief system. I just have to, to be evidence. Evidence has been a key word for the week. Evidence that whatever I'm dealing with, whatever I'm working with, it's working. And if you're interested and you want to be well or you consider that I'm well, not me particularly, but whoever is the source of the ultimate truth, if I'm following your your beliefs and the content, it should be evident in the way your, your, your life is, how you respond to this life. Now, some may assume that the evidence is, oh, you got a, you got a nice house. You got a big car. You look you look fancy, right? And inside of that person's world, maybe everything is distraught. 
It also could be that they do have a nice house. They do look fancy and everything is good in their world as well. Like you can have these riches and you can have the wisdom and understand on how to have those riches if you have a good relationship. It also could be, here's the third bracket, that someone doesn't look, doesn't have the house and the car, but the, they have a peace. The way that they respond to things doesn't cause them to to want to take their life. They they have a joy as they navigate this land. Like what what makes you have that peace? And some people have found it in different ways. And if we are navigating through life, maybe we should look for the evidence of people who are trying their best to to get on that plane versus it's oh, how do I say this? Because I want us to have thoughtful conversation, have questions. But I think they should be thoughtful, not uh, this is my opinion. So you know how to say point of view and your opinions. It's, it's, I'm trying to have this conversation without leaning towards this is what you're supposed to do. I want it to be something you consider. I think that's the word. I want it to be something that we consider that when we are deconstructing any type of idea or thought or belief system, that we make room to look at all the different angles and spaces. And we also start to be that journalist for ourselves, identifying, you know, those questions about why are we, you know, why are we so passionate about it? Why does it make us mad? Does it have anything to do with the person? Did we explore all the different aspects? So for instance, some people may have disowned the Bible because a story that someone had told them, but they never went and read the Bible themselves. Then you have people who have read the Bible fully and got more um, what is the word? They were more uh, affirmed in their faith, where some people have read the whole Bible and then they have more questions and they disconnected them. But you know what the key, what I admire about both is that they read the source, and then they responded differently, right? We have a choice to respond differently. So I think we're all going to hit a different response. But when we say we, when we really start to, to dig into why we believe things or why we are upset or why we hate this person or why we prefer, prefer this president over this person is we have to start investigating our own thoughts. We start, we have to start having questions for ourselves. Go back as far as you can in your childhood. And if you can go to therapy, because what's going on in therapy is there's questions that you might not even consider on this channel. We're just going to, we're, we're doing this, you know, as a person, the, the free man, free woman therapy where maybe you don't have the opportunity but you just have a few questions that you can consider as it relates to content but if you have the resources to go to therapy and they they are skilled and they're able to provide you their their wisdom and guidance through their education because that's the thing i had a conversation with somebody about therapy i'm almost done y'all i'm almost done i had a conversation about therapy with someone and i understand why people do not believe in therapy because it's like another person i remember one day i was watching someone's content and a therapist came on their content, a therapist. They were the, they were a therapist. And I had an idea that therapists had it all together. I assumed that they didn't have anything going on in their lives that was wrong. And so the therapist came on this. It was a man's page. He was talking about relationships and he like rated women and everything. And she came on and, and the way that she responded and her the way that her behavior was, I was like, wow, she's a therapist. And it just really just like shook my whole world because... I'm thinking like, okay, if someone is a therapist or even a teacher, like there's certain professions where if someone chooses that, I have a, 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 a little picture idea of what that looks like, what your behavior looks like. And when I realized that the more and more I engage with people who are, who have titles, but they don't really fulfill the, the way that my mind is, it makes me see that people are human, but it doesn't take away that some humans are one in the wrong field. So maybe they shouldn't be this type of field is not aligned with them, but also that people do have gifts aside from their flaws. And so one thing I learned and I appreciated about my therapist is that my therapist, she was a real person. And I think I, I was living in this world where everybody's kind of like these, you know, it's like a, a whole movie. Everybody is like a role. But she's a real person. But I know that when I was interacting with her, there was something else outside of both of us that was providing understanding and guidance. And it was just the fact that we both were willing to, she was willing to be active in her gift, right? Her gift was was that she was able to be in this position to be a therapist to someone, which some of us aren't that patient to do so. She was able to understand the the knowledge and information from studying, but also um, use a different level of understanding of her relationship with her life to be able to 
bring that into her practice. So what I'm saying here is people have gifts and some people have the gift of therapy. And if someone believes in the Bible, for instance, there are gifts that are explained in the Bible that relate to someone who just has a title called therapist in his life, but it could be translated something differently in the Bible, but it's the same thing. If we don't believe in the Bible, there's an idea that people have talent and gifts naturally, even if they don't use it for anyone else or for the good of all people. People have talents and gifts. You have a talent and gift that you might not have tapped into because you're not tr- because you may have limited yourself. You may not have tapped in and tried things in life to realize that there's a gift and talent in you that you could offer to the world that you feel good about offering to the world. And so I hope that through these discussions that we start to find out what other ideas that we can try and explore, what experiences we can create for ourselves to see what it is that we can add to the world, add in value to the world. But therapy, the point of all is therapy. If we feel like we're having religious trauma, if we feel like we have questions about existing, I do not believe the therapy is going to give us the answers because you know what? I gave my, I provided a lot of questions to my therapist. I just thought she was going to have the answer. That's my problem. I have questions for people and I know that no one here has the answers, but I'm just hoping that they do. But even though I haven't had anyone always give me the exact answer, there have been points and moments in time where I did get answers that made sense to me, that it was a relief and it, it was the perspective and the understanding that just really just shattered any confusion that I had or it helped me level up in one way or the other. So although we don't always have the answer for everything in life, I have a theory that there's some things that's imparted to and wisdom that's imparted to some of us. And then when we come together to the table, it's like the full story is there. So we're lacking the community, the uni- uni- <laughs> the unity and conversations that we can have with one another in order to get the full picture in the story. But that is all. I want to thank Zachary Helton for putting out his content, giving us something to talk about. If you have any comments that you want to share, place them in the comment box below. I'm so thankful for anyone who decided to stay this far. If you have decided to stay this far, do one or two things. Please like this video, subscribe so that I can get out there and I can play more games with people about deep thinking and laughing. Ha, 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 ha. Okay. And then also maybe just put a yellow heart in the comment box below or a thoughtful comment to engage. Until next time, hold on to you as much as you can. Hold on to your health, your well-being, and your mind. Be mindful. Bye.